Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the third video with E2. Um, today we're going to be really going over CRUD. So first thing you want to do is bring up your website if you haven't already, and then we're going to go to a route, which is the question mark equal, oops, question mark, yeah, equal GI, that's G-I-I, -I. that'll bring you to the code generator. And once again, it's a magical tool that will write all the code for you. So we're just going to bring up our little, hmm, I have some code of something else that I'm working on here. Sorry about that. Get a little organized, maybe. Pet store, where are you? There we are. So we've got uh, this code that we've been working on here. And thus far, everything's been auto-generated. And that's not going to change for this tutorial. We're going to generate some stuff for this as well. So we can just see that, you know, we only have our site controller, but we've already generated the models from the previous tutorial. So what we're going to do now is generate what's called CRUD, which stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. Basically, it's just a, a bunch of views and a controller that allow you to, well, create, read, update, and delete. So we're just going to go ahead and click Start under CRUD. And if you've used the Y1, this will be a little confusing because you have to actually do the fully qualified path to wherever you want to put this thing. So the model class, what do we want to do here? Let's bring up our database. We want to, hmm, let's make a pets. Let's do that. We're going to take this pets table. We're going to make some crud for it. Actually, you know what? No, we're not. We're going to do accounts first because we've got our, uh, our uh, column constraint. Oh, no, we don't. All right. Yeah, well, we'll do pets. I like pets. Why not? So we're going to do app models pets. Now, whenever you have a question, just mouse over the label here and it will tell you exactly what it's looking for. Now, a search model, that's different than a model. A search model allows you to, well, search. It sounds a little confusing, and it is. Um, the reason why you need a search model is because a model is a representation of the data. And if you're going to search, you're actually going to perform a filter. So you're changing the representation of that data. So we're going to do pretty much the same, app models, and then we're going to say pet search. Now, the controller class, we need to actually generate a controller. So we're going to do app slash controllers and then whatever the name is, controller. Um, you should note, you should call this a controller. Don't just call it pets. Call it pets controller or it'll get kind of cranky towards you. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit preview at this point. And if you get an error, just, you know, figure out what it's telling you. Nine times out of ten, you don't have the right path or you have a naming convention incorrect. Notice how we didn't have to fill in the view path. It just automatically knows. But if you want it in a different location, this is where you would change it. And it's going to give you a preview of everything it's going to create. Notice how we're creating a controller. We're creating model. Uh, the pet search. The pets model already exists. And then we're creating some views here. We're going to go ahead and hit generate. Ta-da! Now, unlike Yi version 1, this does not give you a nice pretty little link for you to click on to preview it. It's just the code was generated. And I, I think I said this in the previous tutorial. Sometimes you'll click that and it'll say generating, but the, you won't actually have a file. And so it's always good to you know, go out and check. There's our pet search. And when we go to views, we should now see, yes, there's pets and there's our views. And there's our pets controller. And we're going to go through those files real quick. But first, we're going to actually bring up what we just created. You can change the route to pets. And voila, there's pets. Now, when you do not include a view, like if we click on create, you see how it's pets slash create. That percent two %2f is the uh, HTML encoding for the slash. When you don't include that, it just goes to index by default. So let's go back, and this is called a breadcrumb at the top. You can see how 
all of this was generated for us. So we've already got some pets in here. We can create, and from over in this little area, we can view, we can edit, and we can delete. So we can actually, let's just say, type MIT and hit enter, and there's mittens. That's the search class in action. Um, the reason why you need that search class, once again, is because you're changing the representation of that data. So we can actually go in here and let's create one. Why not? Uh, let's see, category. I don't remember the category names. So we're just going to say one. Test animal. Why not? Cost. Hmm. Let's say this is a really expensive animal. We're going to leave the picture blank and we're going to try and create this. Notice how, because we didn't put the data in there, it's saying date posted cannot be blank. That's part of ye intrinsically with the uh, classes. Uh, we're going to look at the model class and explain that a little more in depth. But that right there is actually ye in action. And that's why you use CRUD, because it takes all that code out. You think about that. You would have to write the code to show the form, to talk to the database, to verify the input data, to do all these things. And it just you know, it makes life very, very simple. So let's just grab a date here, just because I really don't feel like typing that out. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to that stuff. And ta-da, we have created an animal. Now we can either update or delete. Pretty simple, if we go to update, it just brings us back to this editor. And if we delete, it says, are you sure you want to do this? I'm going to hit cancel because I really don't want to delete my test animal. But it will actually delete it. Same thing here, you can click on view, which brings you there. You can click on edit, I mean, it's pretty, Pretty self-explanatory. Notice how the breadcrumbs auto-update. So that is CRUD in a nutshell, but now we're going to deep dive into the code. So let's flip over, and we are going to look at the pets model first. Hmm, maybe if I can quit being retarded here. There we go, pets. This is the main pets model. This is an active record, meaning it talks to the database. and some of these things may be new to you. You see these properties? That's how we tell this is a specific property. Sounds self-explanatory, I know, but you need to have those in place and it's all auto-generated for you. And if you don't have those, bad things will happen. You won't be able to access it. Now this right here is a special property. See this ID category zero? Let's flip over to the database real quick. Remember how we did this foreign key? This actually points to the index in the category table. So what ye does, let's flip back here, is it creates a special property based off whatever the name is. And that actually will do what's called a lazy load on that record. Meaning, if you say pet, well, it would help if I actually did this right pet and then you do a pointer to the ID category. I'm going to copy and paste just because I'm lazy. It'll actually load that record from the database automatically and then you can say name like that. So you don't actually have to do a full SQL query to pull that up. Pretty neat, huh? Now if we look at this, you can see how we have our table name, which is pets. But then we have this rules. What is this? Well, this tells the E framework what each property really is. You can see how they're required. That's why date posted said, ah, it can't be blank because it's required. However, you notice how picture is not required, which is why we could get away with not putting a picture in there. And we're saying ID category is an integer, description is a string, and you can get you know a little more interesting here. You can say like name and pictures a string with a maximum length of 255. All that's auto-generated for you. You don't have to mess with it, although you surely can. I do on occasion. Date posted is safe. What does safe mean? That means it's marked for safe search so that when you're searching, it'll automatically try to convert it. At least that's how I understood it. If I'm wrong, somebody let me know. Attribute labels. This takes the column name and breaks it into a friendly name for the view. So you can see like ID pets is now ID space pets and ID category is now ID space category. So if we go to the actual page here, you can see the ID space pets, ID space category. 
So if you don't want to see the ID, you can actually just you know change that to pet number. So when we just kind of update this, you can see it's now pet number. And same thing when you go to, to edit it here, which you won't actually see it because it does not going to let you edit the pet number. So maybe that was a poor example, but I think you get what I'm saying here is you can update those attributes and the labels will update with them. And right here is your special reference to you can see how it has the get ID category zero. Ignore the get part. What this is really called is lowercase instead of upper ID category zero. That's really all you need to pay attention to. And what it'll do here in the background is when you call that, it calls this function automatically, which this has one, and then it does the linking for you. So that in a nutshell is the pets class. Now we're going to look at the pet search class. Notice how the pet search extends pets. So it's basically the pets class we just looked at, but it's extended. We're inheriting it. And then we do a couple different things. We add in some more rules. We do a scenario, which we're not really going to get into scenarios too much, but basically you can say my scenario is I'm editing or my scenario is I'm purchasing or my scenario is I'm selling. You know, you have different scenarios and it can make it very complex. We're going to keep it simple for this discussion. But right here is the real magic search. When you're in this guy right here and you type in, let's say, test, that's what is being called when you hit enter is that right there. It's the search function in the search class. And it'll give you params and you can actually, you know, put those out in debug. And let's actually talk about that real quick. Let's say ye warning and params. I'm not sure if it'll let us do this, but we'll try it. What we're going to do here is we're going to create what's called a debug message and go back out here we're gonna just go boom and you see how that little one is now orange this is called the debug bar and it tells you a lot of information like the version of ye the version of PHP the status return the HTTP status the route you're on the log the time it took to load the amount of memory the database transactions and the time and the asset bundles so if you click on log Ta-da! Here is your log messages. Now the reason why I did a warning is because it'll stand out a little better. You can see there's our warning and these are the params. It's an array. So you can add pretty much anything you want in here. And you can see everything that happens right down to the SQL queries that Yi is generating for you. It makes things a lot easier. So when you're in there troubleshooting, you can say like uh, Yi info performing a search. Save that. We'll run it again. Notice how it doesn't increment for the infos, only for the warnings. So you should use your warnings sparingly, but your info is in there. So that's a good way to give yourself like little debug notices. Um, when you actually upload this to a public site, something other than localhost, that will not be displayed. It automatically disappears. It's pretty slick. I like it. It makes things a lot easier to debug. So what's really going on in this search function is we're just doing a pets find, meaning we're taking the pets class. We're saying, hey, find me all the records in pets. Then we're making what's called an active data provider, which is something we haven't touched on yet. It's kind of like a class on steroids. It does all the providing of the data, which is why it's called a data provider. So all you really need to know is that it's providing data. Typically you use these four widgets. Then we're saying this, this class, the pet search, we're going to load the params. The params are that uh, array that we shot out. Let's look at those again. So it's going to load this right here. Actually, it's going to load that right there, pet search. This is how it finds it because that's the name of the array, pet search. And then this is the actual data that it's going to load. So you can see it lines right up with the, you guessed it, the column names. And there is our name TES, because that's what we searched. So that is the actual query it's going to build. Pretty slick, huh? And there's the actual SQL query that gets generated from that. Select 
count star from pets where name is like blah 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 and it does a couple different queries so that it can get a count it can get the actual rows etc etc and you notice how it's limiting 20 because it's doing pageation pretty slick let's go into here um, if it's validated um, models can be validated and what that means is that the parameters have to be within the rule set let's go back to the rules here these rules that's where validation comes from so if we enter a name that's 300 characters long it won't validate because its maximum is going to be 255 that's what validate really does so if it validates then we're going to return that data provider which is just provides data otherwise we're going to jump down here and we're going to say query filter where and then it adds in the parameters that it loaded from that query string this guy right here and then it's going to say query and filter where and this is where that SQL query actually gets generated right here you're saying and 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 then you're going to return the finished data provider Whew. kind of confusing and you may need to look into that a little bit more typically you won't mess with this until you get into advanced topics like when you actually want to search on a related table which we'll cover in a future tutorial so enough about models I know your head's probably swimming at this point we're gonna go into the controller and remember the controller controls the flow of information in and out so here's index our index page this is the default page before we do that we should probably look at the behaviors right here you can define behaviors which determines how the views behave you can see how delete requires post what does that mean that means you cannot actually do a route to delete you can't say delete see method not allowed method requires post but if we go back here let's actually go to the pets sorry but if we go we'll go to delete this animal out notice how it's saying do you want to do this and if I hit yes which I'm gonna do it actually makes a post in the background loads the page and you can see how it's now gone alright so anything that starts with action is a view so action index action view so a view view is kind of confusing it's just gonna load the view file it's gonna load the create file it's gonna load the update file delete doesn't actually have a file it's just gonna redirect to the index so when it does that redirect it's gonna load you guessed it the index file and we're gonna keep scrolling down and this find model function is used a couple times you can see it's actually used in delete so when we and let's go here when we go to go to delete or actually let's go to view you can see how it's doing a query parameter of ID equal to because that's the record ID or the pet number so we're gonna go back in here what it's doing let's go to view you can see how this takes a parameter called ID and it's going to render the view file or the file named view under the views if that's not confusing enough and it's going to give it a model using find model now let's break this down a little bit because that's bloody confusing so what it's gonna do is it's going to load the controller is gonna come in and say what are you looking for it does that based off the route pets slash view so it's gonna look for the pets controller and then in the pets controller it's gonna look for the action view and if you were in update it would look for action update and notice how it's got a parameter ID too. That's how it knows which record to look at. So if we stick with our update, where are you at here? Yeah, update. So in the pets controller, it's gonna look for update. It has to have that ID parameter. Then it's gonna say, I need a model, which is a representation of the data. It's gonna say find model, which is down here, which is gonna actually use the pets model to find that specific record and if it doesn't find it it's gonna say not found page does not exist so let's test that out I'm gonna give it just this huge number that I know does not exist 404 not found does not exist so that's a really good way of keeping people from trying to modify things that just shouldn't be there and you notice how in our debug we now have a red one meaning there was a failure and you can actually go in and see you know file not found exemption 
Now, if we take that ID out of there, see how you get a different one. You get 400 bad requests, missing required parameter ID. That's all being auto-generated for you. All right, so let's go back to our update here. So once we have our model, you know, we've actually gone to the database, we found that specific record. We're saying if model load, and then we're going to take the post from, you know, this is the essentially the uh, PHP post variable is what that is with some other magic in front of it. So if we can load that post into the model and we can save the model, then redirect to that view. Otherwise, we're just going to load the update file. So it's pretty self-explanatory what's going on here. I mean, if you know just rudimentary PHP, you can kind of eyeball this and figure out what's going on. Um, same thing with create, you know. If we could actually load it, you know, if it's a post, then go to view. Otherwise, go to create. So let's actually go to this and test that out. So when we click create, notice how it does the create view. But if we fill something in here, just why not? Because, yeah, see, that's got to be a number. That's what I love about E. Uh, no picture, don't care. Oh, yeah, i got to get an actual date format. Da, 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 database, where are you? Save me, MySQL, save me. All right, so we're going to put that in there. Now, notice how we haven't even tried, and it's already kind of doing this here. So, like, if we delete that and we go there... That's called Ajax Postback. That's what that is. So this is, you hear the term Ajax thrown around quite a bit. Well, it's already baked in, so you don't really have to mess with it. And you can turn that off in properties, but for this specific tutorial, we're just going to leave it on. So if I type in a string, notice how must be a number. So all that's already in there for you. Now, when I hit create, notice how it puts me on view. Let's go back to that, that file here. So what we're saying is, if it can load the request or the post data and save it, then go to view, meaning we've already created it. Otherwise, just go to create. So that's the magic behind that. Now, the individual view files, these might take a little bit of explaining, but we can go through them. So if we go to index, and let's actually go to index on our page here, you can see how it displays this grid with these little buttons and the create button and all this stuff. So let's look at that super quick. You can see there's our breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are the little strip across the top of the page here that allows you to navigate. And there's your title. And right here is your create button. And then we have got a search, or we've got a grid view widget. Uh, the concept of widgets may be a little new to you. Basically, it's code that already exists that you can just simply call. So this, we're making a grid view class from the widget, and then we're giving it a data provider, which remember, a data provider just provides data. So it's basically a collection of models, or I should say a, a fancy array of models. And then we're giving it a filter model, or the search model, which allows you to do the fancy searches up here, so it knows intrinsically what it needs. And then we have the different columns, like we have a serial column, and then we have our different uh, our different columns from the database. You notice how this one says end text. That's how you format it automatically. And then cost, etc. And then you have this action column. So we're going to look at serial and action, the first and the last. So the serial just puts a number right up the front here, one, two, three. The action, these are the view, edit, and delete buttons. Now if we go to, let's just say view, and then we're going to go look at the view file here. Same thing. We've got our breadcrumbs. We've got our title. We've got our buttons up top. You notice how this one actually puts in a confirmation dialog. There's the code that generates that. And then we once again have a widget. This one's a details view, which is different than the grids view. This is the details. That's the grid. So the details view is pretty much just for looking at a specific record. And then once again, we have our columns in there. Now, if we go to update, you see how we got a whole lot more breadcrumbs. And we've got very little code, but it says this render underscore form model equal model. What's that mean? 
Well, let's break this out here. Let's actually go to update. You notice how it displays a heck of a lot more than what we're seeing. We got all that breadcrumbs, but it's displaying this huge form. Well, this is, you know, a prime example of code reuse. We have this underscore form file, which is right here. And that is what's being loaded. And this is used when you update or create. The model is the parameter passed by the controller. So let's actually go into update. You can see how we got the model here. And we're saying, you know, this redirect, and then we're giving it the model ID. But if we do the update, we're actually giving it the model class itself. That's how that gets in there. So when we go to update, it has this right here, which tells it what it is. So there's our model, which is actually a app models pets. And then we're passing that as a parameter to the underscore form file. So it can be reused over here as well. There's our model. So whenever you're wondering what something is, like if you want to know what a form is, it's actually a ye slash widget slash active form. And you can dig up that class and look at the code. When you're wondering what this is, it's actually ye web view. You can, you know, dig up that code and look at that too. If you're wondering what type of model you've got, you've got a ye app, or uh, sorry, an app models pets, which we've generated. So then we've got our form fields, and this is an active form, which means it talks to the database. Um, and then from there, we're just loading the parameters from the model. You can see we got form field, and then we're giving the model, and then the field within the model. And then we have a different type of input. And you can do things like check boxes, drop down boxes, text areas, all those things. You can see how like these are text inputs, but this one is a uh, text area. So it auto generates some, but not all. And then you've got a submit button, which depending on what you're doing, is it a new record you're going to create? Otherwise, you're just going to update. And you determine what it looks like based off the class, depending on what you're doing here. So that's really all there is to it. Um, that is kind of a general overview of CRUD. Um, I would advise that you kind of, you know, make a couple database tables and generate some of your own CRUD and just kind of play around with it and get a feel for what it does in the background. Um, that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you like this, let me know. If you hate it, well, don't let me know. No, I'm just kidding. Just let me know. Um, trying to get a feel for how I want to present these Yi tutorials because Yi is different than most of the other things that I've done in life. So I want to present it a little bit differently and try to give it the justice it deserves. Um, you can also join the Void Realms Facebook group. I think we're pushing, oh man, we're well over 300 people at this point. I haven't actually looked at the count. I've been very busy. But every time I have a question, I actually go into the Void Realms Facebook group and then people smarter than me answer the questions that I post. So I feel very stupid every time I go in there. So that's it. Thanks for watching.